Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing? December 31st, 2023. This is the last worship of this year. Let's close our eyes and prayerfully begin our worship time. This is the word of God, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. Amen. Hallelujah, our beloved Heavenly Father. In your, in, your, in your unchanging love and grace in the year of 2023 that you've led us all, all the way through. So we want to finish this year with a heart of thanksgiving and with hope we want to welcome the new year. We are thankful for your truthful word. And thank you that you are your plan for us is with the peace and the future and hope. So as we believe um, this word, your word, and uh, start this new year, we want to give you this worship. In the coming new year, in your, may we be living in your love and become the ones that uh, you are uh, pleasing. We want to give you this worship with a heart of joy and with praise. May the Spirit of God will pour your heart into each one of us so that we can start this new year with your strength. We give you, we give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Worship one more time for this year. We've been through so many different things this, in this past year. But God is always with us, and He has always been hope for us. And we are thankful that you protected us all through the year. We give you all the thanks and glory to you. Lord, I pray for those who are ill and struggling. I pray that you will heal their body and heart. For those who, I pray for those who are going through the trial of life. Lord, do remember this word, your word, say, do not fear, for I am with you. 
do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Please send them, send them your encouragement and comfort. Pray for the leaders of the nations that you will guide them and lead them that they can make the right decision. Pray for those who are struggling in their lives. Pray that you will help will be on them, will, you will uphold them, that you will provide their needs. Pray that your, um, your grace will be on each one of them. We are chosen by you and loved by you and we are coming uh, before your presence today. And not just being here, but through internet, the uh, people are worshiping together, and you are uniting us. And may we be able to seek you and adore you as we come together. Please touch us and guide us. And please show yourself to us in this place. I pray that you will strengthen Pastor Lee and you will sanctify our year, years so that you will guide us with your blessing. May your word be the, the, the food sustenance for, our, for the coming week so that we can walk with your word. May your love be poured even more into the next year with a new hope and with new thanksgiving and new strength may we be able to step into the new year with, the, with your hope we pray in the name of Jesus Amen I got a stuffy nose so it uh, might be hard to hear today but so let's welcome each other <laughs> <laughs> we have some uh, people of traveling and also some visitors too. Um, pray for uh, there are those. Uh, pray for those who cannot be here with the illness. Do we have anyone who has birthday this week? Jane? Yeah, this Wednesday is your birthday, Jane. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He doesn't like to remember when they get old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> 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 nice cake. <laughs> So we cannot eat that birthday cake, so let's put it away. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a small change next year uh, from, from next week, from January. We will not have lunch, uh, but we will have a coffee and tea and snack. We'll be so it's going to be a small snack time um, in her fellowship. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're worried about being hungry, uh, please eat before you come to the worship. And, and if you need to be on diet, uh, just come and, uh, without eating. And we will not have meals after the service. And we will continue having a Bible study on Wednesday and Thursday. We will resume the Bible studies and also resume the Friday um, intercessory prayer from next year. And also next week, uh, the first week, first, uh, first worship we will have the uh, communion. So let's pray every remembering Jesus' uh, suffering and begin the new year. And please have a prayer time during the week. Pray for church, pray for the brothers and sisters, pray for those, especially those who are suffering with sickness. And pray for Earl's health and pray for people who are visiting Japan uh, for their families and brothers. And pray that the people who went back to Japan can be the witness uh, for the people who don't believe and pray for missionaries all over the world. Let's have time of uh, offering and you may use the offering box in the back, uh, the offering box and before and after the worship. <coughs> it is uh, the sacrifice that pleases God, so let's pray together. Hallelujah, uh, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, through his suffering, our sins are forgiven and removed, and we, we're thankful that you, you gave us eternal life. So with the heart of thanksgiving for salvation and for for providing our daily needs, we want to give you back what, what belongs to you, the blessing you've given us. May your gospel be preached more through this offering. Please use it. For those, please use this um, so that people who don't know you will be able to know Jesus Christ. Pray for the blessing for and salvation and, and help on each one of us as we give you worship. We pray for brothers and sisters who are ill. And I, I pray that uh, your healing will be on them. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me read the Bible. Today's scripture is Luke 24, 36 to 39 and 44 to 49. Now, while they were ten telling these things, Jesus himself suddenly stood in the mid their midst, midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were looking at the Spirit. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? Why are, you, why are doubts arising in your hearts? See my hands and my feet that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you plainly see uh, that I have. Now, he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance of forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Amen. Thank you very much. Before we listen to the message, let's pray one more time. 
My beloved Heavenly Father, we are about to hear your word. This is not the word of human, but with the Spirit, with the Spirit's help, I pray that your word will be on each one of us here. So if they don't, for those who don't believe in Jesus, will have the faith to believe, and for those who believe already, will have stronger conviction. So that they will be able to have heart to share, the, share Jesus with those who don't know you. As we are welcoming the new year, they will be um, receiving more of the blessing and the grace from you. Pray, pray that your spirit will be on each one of us here and those who are worshipping through online. May your salvation be on each one of us. May your help be on each one of us. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the last day of 2023. And before the worship time, I always, at the beginning of the service, I always say the date. And sometimes I make mistakes. And sometimes I say October instead of December, or uh, it's 2023, but I might say 2020, and I might mess up with the numbers, because the time passes so quickly. And before we know, before I realized that this ended up being the, third, the last day of 2023. And if you look at the the pictures, uh, you can see how how far we can come, uh, how, how, how quickly the time went. What was uh, your year like to, in 2023? Many good things happened, many bad things happened. I'm sure a lot of things happened to you, but God's love and grace is unchanging. Whether we feel or not, God is always with us and protecting us. God, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, is always with us. I have so many things that I'm, I'm thankful about. So, a lot of things happened this year. Um, we had four people being baptized, and that's something to rejoice about. And two of them were, and also two people were called to heaven. And we had a Thanksgiving service here too. And uh, we had a Christmas pl play that was a very uh, joyful, enjoyable time in the time of sharing the gospel as well. And three missionaries, missionaries visited here and told us about uh, their work. God has led us through many ways and blessed us. And in this coming New Year, I'm expecting more of God's blessing and the salvation will be on uh, many people. So this is the last day of uh, the year. We came to the very end of the Luke's Gospel. But this is not really the end of the story, this is the beginning of the new story. And this is the new last day of the year, and tomorrow will be the beginning of the new year. <laughs> and the book of Luke it continues into uh, the Acts of Apostles. Because who wrote the book, the Acts? Because uh, it was uh, Luke himself was filled with the Spirit and wrote the book of Acts. So these two books are uh, continuing, connected. The, because the death on the cross is not the end, it was the beginning of the new era of God. Because 
Jesus uh, conquered death and resurrected from the dead. And now the Spirit of God is staying with us all the time. It is the era, it is the time of the Spirit. So Jesus gave us new hope. And in those days, Jesus told them about his resurrection coming back to life so many times, but disciples did not believe him. And even after he was resurrected and appeared to them, but some people did not be even believe after he appeared to them. <coughs> And for those who could not believe in Jesus, to the disciples who, uh, who did not believe, he appeared to them. It says now while they were telling these things, and remember Jesus appeared to Mary and other women at, the, at his tomb and also he appeared to two disciples on the way to Emmaus. So the disciples who did not see Jesus uh, while these disciples were talking about this, he finally appeared to those disciples. And the disciples who did not believe in Jesus' resurrection, they thought he is a ghost, spirit. So they were afraid. And Jesus clearly told them, showed them that he is really resurrected from the dead. And he told them to touch his feet, uh, touch his hand and his uh, side, and told them, see, I have a bones and flesh. And they also, he also showed them that he ate food. And he clearly showed them that Jesus is resurre resurrected. And what was the first thing he said to the disciples? And if I ask you a question, the answer is always on the board, on the screen. He said, peace be to you. And the reason why Jesus appeared to them, there are three things, but the first thing is peace. The disciples, when Jesus was killed, on the cross, they thought that was the end, and they ran away. And Peter denied Jesus for three times, that he doesn't know. He doesn't know him. They thought that the, that was the end, but Jesus came back to life and conquered death. And for the disciples who are anxious and who lost peace uh, for their future, the first word Jesus said to them was, Peace be to you. Do you have peace? Do you have a heart, heart of peace? The true peace comes from Jesus Christ. And this peace, Jesus is talking about the peace from heaven. <coughs> Jesus told him about this many times. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And especially on the cross, Jesus won the victory over the ultimate problem that people have, that is death. So Jesus won over, uh, Jesus had victory over the human ultimate problem of sin and death, so he can give the peace to us. 
We read this uh, word at the beginning of worship. The plan God has for us is a plan for to prosper and to give you peace and hope. Do you have any plan next year? Do you think it will happen as you planned? When the 2020 when this year began, did you have any plan that really went uh, according to your plan? We make many plans, but not everything does not go as we planned. But whatever God plans will happen. And His plan, God's plan, is to give us peace, to give us hope and the future. So Jesus Christ is the one who gave us new hope. And Jesus came to this world and he appeared to his disciples so that he can give peace to the disciples. But these disciples don't really deserve to meet Jesus. When Jesus was arrested, what, what did they do? They all ran away. Especially Peter. Peter told Jesus that even if everyone else betray you, I will not, I will die with you. After he said that, Peter denied Jesus three times that I don't know him. And Jesus told them many times that he would be resurrected. But the disciples, even when they saw Jesus, they still could not believe. <laughs> so what would, what would Jesus would say if he appears to disciples? He could have said to Peter, didn't you deny me that, that you don't know me? <laughs> he might, he could criticize the disciples. But Jesus did not do do that. He, but instead, he gave the word of forgiveness and peace. So in John chapter 3 verse 17, it's, he says, God did not send his son into the world, not to condemn, but to, but to save. He did not come to judge us, but to save us. And also chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life. And, uh, Jesus came to let people will have life and have it to the full. So, in order so we can have eternal life and we can live in God's blessing, Jesus came. But there's somebody who steals the uh, blessing, somebody who destroys us and kills us. That's a thief. And who is this thief he was talking about? That's not me. <laughs> Have you ever stolen? The one who steals God's blessing and destroy is the Satan, the devil. In, in the Revelation, he talks about Satan, describe him as a serpent, the old serpent. Remember, the one who tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden uh, was a serpent. He is the one that uh, brings chaos to the world and deceives the world. 
That is Satan. But Jesus conquered Satan on the, on the cross. In Revelation 12, verse 9, talks about uh, Satan. And after this, in verse 10, it talks more about him. He's called accuser. Accuser of our brothers, and he accuses us before God. That is Satan. He is the one that accuses our mistakes and our sins. He is uh, he disappoints us and he deceives us. He tells us that you should not deserve, you do not deserve this life. But if we are children of God, if we believe in Jesus, we can tell others the peace about the story of peace. We are not the one to accuse. Even if others make uh, mistakes and, uh, and sins, we, we can tell them our role is to tell them the hope of, uh, tell them the hope and the peace. That's what Jesus did. Even the, though the disciples uh, betrayed him, and uh, first Jesus gave them the peace. So when we see other people make uh, a sitting, we, we may like to accuse them and criticize them, but that heart comes from Satan, not, not from God. But the, the message of forgiveness and peace come from the Spirit. <laughs> so Jesus came to tell them about the peace first to the disciples who were afraid. And then the second thing Jesus did was to open their hearts so they can understand the word of the Bible. And what, it, what is written in the law of Moses, in the psalm, in the prophets. And what does it mean when he said uh, Moses, the law of Moses, and the prophets, and the psalm? And to the disciples who were walking to Emmaus, uh, it says he, was ex he explained to them the study with Moses and the prophets. So, uh, the people of Israel call the Old Testament Tanakh. Have you heard this word, Tanakh? You might have seen Tanaka, that's a Japanese name, but it's a Japanese person's name, but Tanakh. <laughs> So, Tanakh means the Torah and the prophets, the law and the prophets and, and the Psalms. The, the first letter, first word of these uh, Torah, Devim and Kethim, Kethim, I put them together, they call it Tanakh. So, that means the Old Testament. The whole Bible talks about Jesus Christ. So Jesus uh, explained to them about this. So for the, the disciples who were going to Emmaus, when Jesus, when they heard of Jesus' ex explanation, he, they witnessed that their hearts were uh, Burning, their hearts were burning within us. When Jesus came to explain them the word of God, not understanding with their head, but their spirit was burning because they understood the Old Testament. 
So who wrote the Bible? People who were filled with the Spirit wrote the Bible. The book of Luke was written by Luke. He was written in the, under the inspiration of the Spirit. And as I always say, when I, when I say the, speak the message, uh, you will hear the English um, through the translator. But the translator is only speaking the words that I'm speaking. So the Luke just like that, Luke is, was writing, but the word come from the Spirit. In uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, it says, All scripture is God breathed. From Genesis to the Revelation, all scripture is God breathed, written by inspiration of God. So these were written by people who were inspired by God. So because the Spirit wrote these words, when we can understand it when we read it with the help of the Spirit. Of course, it is better to read the Bible by not reading. But when you are reading, we need to have the, the help of the Spirit, who is the author, and that will help you to understand more. There are people who study the Bible and uh, research about it, but those scholars, some of them do not believe in Jesus. The reason is, they are not regarding the Bible as God's word, but they read as the book written by people. So they do not have any spiritual understanding. And I've shown you this many times. When you read the Bible, if you think this is written by men, they will not they will not see any of the spiritual significance of the Bible. The Bible is not a human word, it is the word of God. So by f when you read by faith, what will happen? And when you read by faith, you can understand what it's written. If you think it is written by people, we don't understand the spiritual matter. <coughs> so, but when you read by the help of the Spirit, we can understand. <laughs> but and as you read the Bible, <laughs> I think I've shown you before, but looks like you, you look like you've seen, you have never seen this before. And when you obey, when you obey the Bible, it's not only understanding, but it becomes personal and become yours. So when you read the Bible, no, we should not be reading with our own understanding, with our strength, but as we seek God's help, and prayerfully, prayerfully read, we will receive the spiritual blessing. We will understand the salvation. We will, well, as we obey the word of God, you will experience God's blessing, wonderful blessing. <laughs> So the, the whole of the scripture, um, people were studying the Old Testament, but entire scripture, entire Old Testament is testifying about Jesus. And disciples, uh, the disciples who understood the Old Testament as knowledges, uh, after Jesus came, they started to understand. 
Then he is risen from the dead after three days, and all this. Uh, the message in the Old Testament, they started to understand. So they were told to uh, proclaim this to many nations, to every nation. So when Jesus came back from death and appeared to disciples, disciples he told them first to have peace and to believe. In, in Jesus Christ. And Jesus told them to, to be witness of Jesus' gospel. With Jesus' peace, they receive salvation. And with a walk with, with God's word, they become witness to tell others. And Jesus commanded them, and Jesus gave disciples this commission. This command we call the Great Commission. But Jesus told the disciples to, to uh, tell the gospel to every nation. In Matthew 28, verse 19, he says, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. And he said, Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Until then, keep proclaiming the gospel. Being baptized, baptism is the expression of uh, people's confession and belief. And and also in verse 49 of 24, he said, I'm sending the promise of my, of my Father upon you, and you will receive. Uh, so stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So Jesus told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they receive what God promised. What was God's promise? That's the Spirit of God. In Acts 1.8, He said that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we will become the witness of Jesus. What do we need to be witness? There is the experience of, the, of Jesus Christ. As we read his word, and as we experience um, his word, that we can become witness. <laughs> so if you read the Bible, as a human word, there's no blessing. But if you read by faith, you can understand and obey. <laughs> so you saw you, uh, you understand this. <laughs> so the important thing is to wait on God's promise. <laughs> Sometimes when we share the gospel with others or or, or uh, serving others. But they are not waiting God's power and doing on their own strength and then you get tired and you will be complaining. But we need to be filled with the Spirit first, not by our own strength, but by the power of the Spirit. 
that you'll be first you'll be filled with the Spirit and do it with the power of the Spirit. So we need to be waiting patiently. When we do things with our own strength, we will have the heart of human and we'll have problems. When we share the gospel with others and we cannot, others do not understand it. So first we must wait for the Spirit and be filled with the Spirit. And Jesus is giving us a new hope. And what we need is to walk with Him. What kind of plan do you have? The most important plan is to read the Bible. How do you read the Bible? With faith. And we need to be obeying and walking with God. Then God's blessing and God's peace and hope will be on us. Let's pray. My beloved Heavenly Father, Jesus won the victory over death and gave us the eternal hope. For those who believe in Jesus, we will have eternal blessing in this world and in the life to come. As we begin the new year, pour us this Holy Spirit and not only that, give us the heart of, of obedience so that this new year will be receiving more of God's love and grace. Give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can, please uh, join us in worship again.
The darkness cannot win over the light. We, in our lives, we have many darkness, but Jesus is the light of the world and shining on us. So, as we start the new year, may we be shown with but the light of Jesus and guide us. And the future and hope and peace will be on us in the new year. And by believing Jesus and proclaiming his name to everyone, for everyone, may the love of the Father and the grace of Jesus and the fellowship of the Spirit will be on each one of us. For this new coming year, we ask for the blessing. We pray and bless in Jesus' name.